Hey everybody, this is Kurt Davis with Real Estate Wealth Coaching and today I've got Rich Harrell joining me. Rich, how are you doing today? Pretty good, how are you? Listen, fantastic. Now, uh, we're recording this so that we can put it on our YouTube channel. Uh, this is great, great content. Now for the people who are watching this or who are listening to this on our podcast, um, I actually interviewed Rich. I looked at the date and it was April of 2018, is that correct? Yeah. What was that, 17 months ago now? Man, it seems like it was. I thought it was a long. I thought, yeah, I yeah. thought it was much, much longer ago. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> before we get into the actual interview, uh, for the viewers out there, if you've been watching our videos, uh, if you wouldn't mind, click the subscribe button so that you can get all the content, all the great videos that we're putting out. Uh, click the like button, share it with a friend. So, uh, like us, follow us, and leave a comment. Let us know what you think. All right, so you know, like I mentioned, we actually did an interview 17 months ago, and there were a lot of exciting things that were happening for you then. Yeah. Now, not to now, I don't want to, I don't technically want to pick up right where we left off, uh, since we're kind of doing a new format here. We're going to kind of start it essentially yeah. like a regular interview. So, for sure. Tell us a little bit about you before real estate. Yeah, so before real estate, uh, I was a business sales manager uh, with Verizon. Worked there eight years, uh, moved up into the company, uh, and then, you know, it just got to a time where, you know, it was just you had to do so much moving up to actually, uh, you know, make a, a better income. Did you like your job? Uh, yeah, for the most part I did. Um, and how long, how long did you work for Verizon? Uh, eight years. Goodness, that's a long time. Long time. Yeah, that's a long time. Um, <clears throat> are you are you originally from Memphis? No, I'm originally from Chicago. All right, uh, came the, down is it here. That the Windy City. Yeah, Windy City. <laughs> it's uh, it gets cold. It's really cold there now. So I was expecting. Yeah, I'm from South Dakota. I feel the pain, even yeah. though I'm not feeling the pain. Um, yeah. I was expecting you to wear like a Cubs hat. I, I mean, down year. Uh, we'll see. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. So. So you're working for Verizon, yeah. eight years, cell phone business. Yeah. How'd you get started in real estate? Where Where did you hear about it? What yeah. happened? So um, growing up, my dad was always into real estate. Um, he's actually fl flipped some deals in Chicago. And I had always, always been interested in real estate, but never really knew the know-how of actually even how to get in uh so i went to a uh a conference with my dad in nashville and there was this guy speaking about wholesaling real estate and uh now when you heard about the conference yeah you said that you went with your dad yeah sure did did your dad take you to the conference or mm -hmm. did you say hey dad we should go check this out what no was he just texted me one day and uh he was like hey um I'm going to be in Nashville at this real estate conference, and I want you to come with me. And I said, sure thing, I'll be there. So there's a possibility that if you didn't go to that conference, you might still be working at Verizon. Uh, yeah, 100% <laughs> I still will be working there. It's a strong possibility. Okay, yeah. so you go to the conference, and it's about wholesaling. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I get to the conference, um, and they're just, you know, first thing is about wholesaling real estate, how you can make quick money. You know, at the time... I had a great job, but I really couldn't get ahead like I wanted to, and so I was all ears. You know, when when he started explaining wholesale real estate, I really didn't believe that this was possible, that people were putting. Did it sound too good to be true? It sounded way too good to be true, and so you know, for that first day, <clears throat> I was, um, you know, I was very attentive, but I just didn't. I, you know, I wasn't buying in into it until he started giving real examples, and then it's just like. It just clicked. I was like, oh, my God, there's people actually out here making these large checks. Now, was this a large seminar? Were there, like, hundreds of people there? Was it thousands? or? Yeah, there was about 150 people there. Okay. Yeah. Probably, like, a hotel conference room setting type? Yeah, it was definitely in a hotel. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you attend this seminar. You're, yeah. you're excited. Yeah. It sounds too good to be true, but you, yeah. you probably feel like there's some sort of window of opportunity here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you come back from the seminar. Yeah. Now, a lot of people, when they go to a seminar like yourself, they get jacked up, they're excited. <laughs> but for most people, when they come home, the excitement yeah. wears off. Right. They go back to the daily grind, yeah. and their yeah. dream of something greater tends to die. That's true. What changed for you? What was different? What happened when you came home from that weekend? 
Well, with me being in a sales background already and, you know, wholesale real estate is all about sales and that's what I've been that's what I was doing at Verizon for eight years. So I just thought it would be really easy for me to transition from what I'm already doing and apply it to real estate. And so, you know, from day one, when I got back, I started hitting the phones immediately and started doing what? Calling. Uh, Who? <laughs> calling people on Zillow, Realtor.com. That, okay, yeah. Craigslist. I just wanted to talk to anybody that was in real estate, whether it was a seller, buyer, wholesaler, whoever. I just wanted to you know, meet with as many people as I can. What what started to happen? You're making lots of phone calls. Yeah. And knowing what wholesaling is. Yeah. Where did it go from there? Uh, actually, I mean, my first deal I, I found on Craigslist. Um, and I, I called a seller. Um, and that seller was out in Florida, I believe. And he owned a house right around the corner from the University of Memphis. He told me that he had it under contract with somebody else, somebody else, but that contract was expiring. He's gonna give me a call when it's done. And so he gave me a call and um, I actually met up with another wholesaler in Memphis. Uh, and basically she just gave me the entire guideline. So you, you partnered with somebody yeah. on this first deal? Yeah, I partnered with somebody on it. How long did it take from when you started working on this particular deal to closing, how, what was the time frame here? Uh, it was about six weeks, I want to say. Six weeks? Yeah. And obviously you sold it to a cash buyer. Sold it to a cash buyer. And what was yeah. the total profit that you split between you and your partner? Uh, we made 14000 <coughs> on it, and so we split seven apiece. That's Mine. a great first yeah. deal. It was, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> now, at this point in time, you're still working full time yeah. as the business manager at Verizon, yep, and yep. you're trying to wholesale real estate. You're yeah. excited. I'm sure there's a lot of activity going on. Yeah. How did you juggle time, or how did you find the time between your your full time day job and yeah. real estate investing? Yeah. So I mean, being a business sales manager at Verizon, it was very flexible because okay. I, I was actually managing a team, and so um, and I was always out in the field speaking with owners uh, about their business with Verizon. So I had a lot of time to basically be on the phone with my business at Verizon and talk to people in real estate too as well. So gotcha. You know, a lot, a lot of people kind of do that. They yeah. Real estate starts to kind of encroach on their yeah. day job to an extent. Yes, happens very quick. All right, so you, 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 you cashed out seven grand that first deal. Yeah. What was going through your mind as the deal was closing and now you received your very first yeah. commission, not, not a commission check, but you received seven grand. What are you thinking at this point? So, I mean, when I got that check, I didn't even believe I was going to get that check until I actually received it from the attorney's office. I was like, man, I still don't believe this is going through <laughs> <laughs> because at that time I didn't meet the buyer. I never met the seller either, okay. you know, because they were both out of state. Sure. And so, um, but, you know, as I said, I had somebody that guided me through the entire process, and I learned so much from that deal. So what you're saying is it was very imperative and crucial for you early on, especially at the very yeah. beginning, yeah. to have some type of mentorship. Some yeah. I couldn't have done it without a mentorship. Yeah, there's no way that deal would have went through because – I was very new. I didn't know any type of legal responsibilities or anything like that. So. Now, while you were working on this first deal, yeah, did you have any other deals that you were working or, or at the time, was it just when you got this first deal and you started working yeah. with your, your partner on this one, did you put all your time and energy into this one deal and kind of nurture it until it closed? Or were yeah. you trying to do other deals at the same time? I had a couple of deals that I was trying to do myself that were falling out because clearly I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I needed somebody to actually guide me through it. So, you know, they just they just they were just falling out, but I never gave up though. So, so essentially, you close this first deal, and yeah. you're kind of like, I I can replicate this. Yeah, I can keep doing this. And yeah. essentially, that's where wholesaling really kind of started for you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I when I went into that attorney's office, and I got my check, and I said, man, okay, I can do this now. I know what to do now. And I just, you know, it just took off from there, really. Did you continue to do any uh, more deals with this same partner? I mean, obviously, yeah. you're still you're still learning. You continue to work with them for a period of time, I'm going to assume? Yeah, I mean, we've done countless of deals together. Still, okay. I mean, still to this day, uh, we've been doing some deals. So, yeah. Now, 
when I was listening back on the on the previous interview when yeah. when we met, you were saying that you were planning on leaving yeah. Verizon at I'm going to assume at the end of 2018. Yeah. Were you able to leave <laughs> Verizon? Yeah, I mean, I basically starved myself for the most part. Um, what I did is I put most of my money into my 401k and I was basically living off of the wholesale real estate checks and it was kind of just me basically getting into that mentality of being a full This is it. Yeah, this like is you're going to have to make it happen. Yeah, it's make or break at this point. Yeah. So, uh yeah, I did leave. Gotcha. Yeah. Were were you were you hesitant? Were you a little scared, nervous? I mean, you worked at this place for eight yeah. years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was really nervous at the time, and I thought about. I was like, uh, I don't know. I just, I was like, maybe I should make another three months, another three months, and then I said, well, if I keep doing that, I'm just not going to leave. You sure. Know? And so, uh, tons of nerves on that last day that I left, but you know, I uh, just just had to get out of it. So, what did your friends and family think? Oh, I mean, friends and family, they were very supportive. Um, you know, they told me, say, hey, you know, you're smart. I think you can do it. Um, you just got to be disciplined, you know, you know, stay the course. So everybody, for the most part, was uh, really supportive. That's incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. So you leave your job. You're yeah. wholesaling full time. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep. How did you transition not completely out of wholesaling because I think a lot of people when they wholesale and do other types of adventure ventures yeah. wholesaling is still something that you do but right right how did you transition into the fix and flips like so, like like my I guess kind of what I want yeah. to know is you're wholesaling things are going great yeah. what was it that made you want to do something different because I know that there's a lot of people who never do anything different yeah. they just keep doing the same thing um, how long was it you know, after yeah. you started really kind of wholesaling full time to yeah. transitioning, the the purpose you know for me as far as wholesaling was to build up enough capital to do fix and flips. Okay. It was just never just to be a wholesaler and not actually buy okay great a property of my own. Wholesaling was just one step to it get you to the next level. Exactly, gotcha. That's, that's correct. And how has it been for you? Uh, it's been great. Um, this year, I flipped 20 properties. Um, That's incredible. <laughs> by, now, by yourself or were no, you? No. No. So I had a partner in about five of them. And then I bought another three and had a couple of partners with me. So I did eight with partners and I did 12 by myself. Uh, so. Do you feel where you're at now with as many that you've done? Yeah. Do you need a partner anymore? Do you feel like with like the relationships you have, yeah. can you do this on your own essentially no nah, you can't i mean you can try but it's just it's just not going to work out long term uh it's not sustainable to do it without a partner <laughs> and, and is the reason why it's not because of yeah. you're, you're trying to essentially you're trying to ramp up you're trying you, yeah. you've done, you did 20 so far this year yeah i yeah. mean obviously you're you want to at least match or do more exactly. next year yeah because i would assume that if you were just doing maybe just a few here and there you could right. probably yeah. do that yourself but yeah. trying to ramp it up um yep yep you start fixing and flipping properties yeah. you have a lot more responsibility now i'm going to yeah. assume you uh, like a lot of us you probably borrowed private money for your right. transactions correct yeah sure isn't is. it incredible it's incredible i mean i'll tell you this the first deal that i bought okay. with with the private hard money whatever you want to call it I, I didn't even meet the lender it was just a connection yeah and networking it was a networking connection uh i had an investor out of california that you know gave me a tip about a lender who lends and i went to the closing table and the money was there i never even met the lender it's ridiculous so <laughs> tell us a little bit about hiring managing dealing with contractors yeah i mean that's something that's you know it's just going to be an ongoing struggle regardless of you know what you're flipping um you know, if it's turnkey or retail, it's really at, at this point I'm at <coughs> where I just, I have to hire people that. How did you purchase. find your contractor? How did you um, find it? It was more of, I had a partner who um, had a good contractor and we found him. He found him. He basically left, uh, I guess, some marketing material in his inbox at his office. Uh, he's a realtor. And okay. 
from there, I've been using that guy since. Now, you've obviously transitioned to a, a primary focus on fix and flips. Are you still yeah. are you still doing some wholesale deals? I haven't done a wholesale deal in a while. I did one this year. Um, I made like twenty thousand off of that one, but that that's the only one I did this year. I've only done one this year. Yeah. Probably because a lot of these deals that you're fixing and flipping, where you normally would have wholesaled them, yeah. you're you're doing the next level. Yeah, I mean, this one I didn't wholesale because there was a squatter that kept coming in and out of the property, and I was like, man, I just don't want to deal with this guy, and so I just sold it off to somebody else. So. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Now, aside from doing fix and flips like you have been, but you've been primarily for investors. Right. The houses right. you're selling are typically being sold to investors who are going to buy them, have them managed. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. Yep. Now, you did your first retail flip yeah, this did. year as well, right? I did, yeah. What uh, what was that like? Uh, it, it's um, a different experience than doing uh, investor-type flips because there's just – so many little things that you have to do in the house to really get it through that home inspection. Um, and as far as the cost too as well, there's a lot more cost when you're uh, flipping that to a retail buyer too as well that I wasn't aware of going in. But I would say the experience overall was a great experience. Were you a little hesitant just because of the the price range or the caliber of the home that you retail flipped was much yeah. higher than you know maybe where you're typically doing fix and flips for investors yeah. uh, was there a little yeah i mean so typically i'm buying these houses anywhere from 20 to 35 and this one i bought at 104,000 and that included the purchase price and the repairs and so i had never bought anything you know in the six figure range sure but, um yeah, I was pretty nervous starting that for sure. Cause did you did you have a partner for your retail flip? No, I didn't. It was no. just me. Did you have any type of guidance or input yeah. from anybody else to help you since this was a first for you? Yeah, I had. Um, I met some contractors that helped me. Um, I met a realtor that helped me too as well. Um, so I had I had about five people that guided me um, through the entire process, which if I didn't have them, I, I would probably be in a lot of trouble. So, <laughs> do, you want, do you want to do any more retail flips or do you like the investor flips more? Uh, I don't know if I'll do any more. It just depends. I'm, I'm not going to actively go after them um, just because I can do investor flips and I can do them at scale. And it actually, from a cost perspective, makes a little bit more sense than doing retail flips at scale. Um, it's just a lot that goes on with the retail flip. I'd rather stick to investor type flips. So. Sure, sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but some people who are real estate investors, Yeah. some of them get their real estate license and some don't. Now, did yeah. I hear a rumor yeah. that you are <laughs> trying to get your real estate license or you're going yeah. to? Yeah, I am. Um, so I passed the certification to take the test. I'm taking the text, uh, the test in about 10 days or so. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, – it was a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be as far as going through the 60 hours, taking that final exam. I mean, it's it's pretty intensive. So, yeah, I am getting it. Now, can I ask why? Yeah, um, really just access to more inventory. Uh, really, I'm, just, I'm trying to go after those expired listings in those investor-type areas sure. that are just falling out the MLS for whatever reason. And so basically from there, I'm going to hire a team to call those expired listings and try to relist those um, or buy them myself. I will tell you, I've had my real estate license since, I think, 2010 now. Yeah. And in in our line of work, and what we do, it has yeah. always been beneficial yeah. to have my license. I have not. I mean, I've I've made more money right. because it's opened me up and allowed me to do a lot more things yeah. because of having it. I mean, and I remember you telling me that, and that's one of the reasons I got my license. Well, I mean, <laughs> if you do another retail flip, you get to list your deal yourself, and you don't have to pay. Exactly. It's, you, it's I mean, a lot you just of don't cost. have. To, yeah, yeah, it's. Plus, it, you know, if you find a deal on the MLS yeah. that you want to buy, you can make your own offer. You right. could get your own commission. I mean, there's yeah. – or you could forego your commission to get to get to the get, deal to if you had to. Deal. So yeah. uh, it 
Yeah. It has. It's incredible. I'm yeah. glad you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Now we just got to figure out where you're going to hang your license. We'll talk about that <laughs> off camera. Uh, so, all right. One question that's been kind of bugging at me here. Yeah. Are you doing any buy and holds yet? Are you ke- have you kept any properties for long term wealth cash flow? Yeah. But you yeah. do. Yeah. So right now I have two buy and holds. Um, I bought one in three eight one two eight last month. I bought it for forty five thousand dollars. It was pretty much ready to go though. Ready to go. Um, the appraisal came back at one hundred four. So, Jeez. Um, was that you know, at, he bought it for how much? Forty five. What are you all in the house at? Forty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, it's a great deal. So um, now, now I have to ask, how did you buy it? Bought it from a wholesaler. Do, are you doing the you feel me with the term the BRR strategy? That one I don't know. Um, right now I have a short term loan on it, five year. 30 amortized so yeah. i'll have to do something with it in five years but i think i'm just going to move it over to a more um you know less costly uh bank and then you need to refinance out of that private loan yeah that's another thing i can do is refinance out if i get a, a private lender i can refinance well you don't need a private lender so yeah well I got a connection for you. Okay, that'd be great. <laughs> so, I mean, because because obviously the plan is is you know you you, you kind of you're it's like kind of like this transition. You're graduating yeah. out of wholesaling, right? With a main focus on fix and flips. Yeah. And while you're building your portfolio buying holds, now here's a question I want to ask you. Yeah. How do you determine which property you're going to keep personally as opposed to selling it off? What I've always kind of found is that the houses that ideally that I want to keep for myself personally right it's also the same house that would yield a very high profit and yeah. I know, and I know for some yeah. people that that's really hard to do because it's like they would rather take the high profit right now yeah. and they always keep telling us I'll just keep the next deal but how, how do you determine really what I've determined and this is kind of a calculation that I personally go by if I can get the house at half of the ARV, and if and if it's in good condition with a stable tenant, then more than likely, you know, I'm going to keep it because it's already a performing asset. Now, if I if it doesn't meet if it doesn't meet that criteria, which is a very simple criteria, um, then it's it would more than likely would be a turnkey flip for me at that point. And then I look at certain zip codes like. One two eight, a lot of development going on, things like that. Um, I'm already in 109, so I'm very familiar with sure. the area. So it just makes it a better buying experience for me. So you have two properties now. Yeah. I mean, do you have any type of idea where you'd like to take it? How many would you like to have? So I mean, my goal by, I would say November of next year is to have 10 or 12 as far as holding. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's just really at this point getting with the right banks and the right people that can get me to that. Sure, yeah. sure. What do you? What would you say some of the recent challenges that you're experiencing in your business right now? Uh, you know, with taking on so many properties, um, you know, there's a lot of bookkeeping that has to be accounted for because you're just taking on so much at one time um so that's a challenge me just keeping up with expenses per property um scheduling contractors um you know dealing with uh you know just uh utility services and things like that you know one thing you know one thing i wanted to ask you probably should ask you a little bit earlier when we were talking about uh you doing fix and flips is yeah when you work with your contractors when they give you a renovation estimate, are they right. giving it to you with a labor and materials, like an all-in price, yeah. or are they just giving you a labor price and then you have to go out and buy materials? Yeah, so I've gotten to the point where it's a labor and material price, and um, the contract that's been working with, with me is he'll go to Home Depot and he'll get everything, and I'm just, or I'll give him my credit card and he'll swipe, or I'll just go come up there and pay when he's got okay. everything. And so it's been working out that way. It makes good. it a lot easier. Yeah, because then you're not out there shopping for materials. I can't and do that. It no, would, I, it would take me seven, eight hours. Mm. <laughs> now, being where you're at with your business and your career and, and yeah. the amount of deals that you've completed, do you do any type of continuing education? Not not from a real estate uh, yeah. license standpoint, but like. Do you still go to any seminars or yeah. 
take any courses or are, there, are, are you still reading real estate books or audio books, uh, networking with other people yeah. online? Like what, what, where are you at with that? I do a ton of networking on LinkedIn um, and I've gained a lot of connections just off of using that platform alone. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all, you know, I, I tell everybody in real estate, you know, you sometimes you got to train yourself because nobody's going to do it if you don't take the time out to do it and read and meet with people. So a lot of my continued education is just actually going to other people's properties and meeting these people and seeing what they're doing and kind of just trying to collaborate with them on sure. what I can do with them. So Sure. Yeah. What would you say the future looks like for you in terms of where you want to take your business? I mean, do you have, yeah. like, where do you want to take it? I know that you said that you want to, you know, by the end of next year, own X amount yeah. of homes for buy and hold, but yeah. where do you hopefully see this going for you? Really, um, I just want to be at a point where I can comfortably scale to the next level. So with me doing 20 this year, you know, I want to do at least 21 next year. I just want to keep going up and up. I'm not really worried about the number of how many. I'm kind of worried about what systems I can put into place so it's actually sustainable. So, I mean, hopefully next year we're going to do 30. But if we don't, it's more of, well, at least we have the systems in place where we know we can keep scaling up sure. and up and up, you know, because it's, it's more of, it's not a race to me. I'm not trying to race anybody to a mm -hmm. finish point. I'm just trying to, you know, sustain myself over a long period of time. So. Sure, sure. What, you know, we're, we're kind of wrapping this up here a little bit. What, yeah. what advice would you be able to offer to anyone who watches this yeah. who's – thinking about real estate or looking to get into it they've always you know someone like kind of your software yeah. you've been doing a job for so long you'd love to do something else real estate's always been fascinating but right there's a hold up for some <laughs> reason like what advice would you have i would just tell people who are you know um uh, watching this is that um you got to start somewhere you know you have to reach out to somebody or start reading or self-applying yourself first because you know everything in real estate to me is self-application you got to start doing some type of activity um the best the best piece of advice i can give anybody who's trying to get into real estate and this is what i did and i think i have mentioned this in the other podcast is every day um, when I got back from that seminar, I was talking to somebody who was in real estate. That means Monday through Sunday, I was on the phone or meeting up with somebody just trying to gain as much knowledge and information as I can. And then from there, I would look at what I digested that information. And then I, was, I would say to myself, okay, I got this information what actionable steps can I do by myself? You know, what type of action can I take now that I can start doing something in real estate? And so it's just really just talking with as many people as you can, getting to know good people. Um, and then, you know, that last step is the hardest step. You gotta, you gotta do some type of action to really get started. And if that's getting a mentorship, um, if that's uh, meeting a contractor, you know, seeing what he's doing, putting in work on the contracting side, whatever it is, if that's getting your license, whatever it is, just take some step in real estate to get started. You know? Sounds like what you're really essentially saying is, is that people need to surround themselves with other people who yeah. are actively doing real estate. Exactly. Make the relationships yeah. and figure out what they need to do to get to that next. Like I said, a lot of people yeah. start out where, where the way you started out in wholesaling, it's one of the most common ways that people actually get into real estate. Right. And then, like right. I said, like what you've done, you've been able to transition primarily yeah. out of that. So um, one of the last things I'll kind of bring up about wholesaling is, is would you say that people can get started in wholesaling with very little out of pocket? It's, it's a low barrier of entry. Like, you don't, yeah. you know, you don't have to have thousands and thousands <laughs> of dollars to start real estate like you can start real estate investing yeah with very little if, if nothing in, in complete deals yeah i mean on, on that first deal we made fourteen thousand on i think we spent maybe like fifty dollars on what on just bandit signs and markers sure and 
most of it was just sweat equity calling buyers. <laughs> yeah. And that, you know, if you got a cell phone, anybody can do that. So, I mean, $50 to make 14000 that's, yeah, that's you're not going to get that return yeah. anywhere. No. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you don't, you can have $1,000 in your bank account. It doesn't matter. You know, sure. you got a phone and you got determination. It's not going to matter what you got in your account. So. It's all about networking. Yeah. Well, listen, man, I really appreciate your time. It's, yeah. it's exciting to hear the progress and the changes that yeah. have happened for you for the better since 17 months ago. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's uh, some good times ahead for sure. I love it, man. Yeah. We'll probably have to do like a, a, a two-year follow-up and see where Let's you're at it, uh, in man. two years. Yeah. You'll be ahead of us. Ah, I don't know about <laughs> that. But. Well, listen, I, like I said, for everybody who's watching this, uh, make sure to like and subscribe uh, to our channel. We're trying to put out great content like this. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Let us know what you liked, what you didn't like, and we will see you guys in the next interview. Thanks, Rich, for coming in. Thank you.